up and down. So I have to hit the start button, and whenever I do that, and I start seeing this moving up and down, now I know I've got a spontaneous breathing patient. Right? So now I can go through the ventilator and start, you know, preparing to set it up. Okay? So the first thing i got to do is i got to plug, my ventilator already been plugged up for you, and I probably will have it hooked up to oxygen for you. So what you got to do first you got to come around here, you got to open this little door, push that button on, turn the ventilator on. Okay? It's going to come up and it's going to say, System Self Test in Progress. So all you do, you just sit back and wait until it comes up. Alright? The next screen is going to come up, it's going to say, Do you want to test the exhalation port? It's going to ask you about language. But don't change the languages, alright? We all speak in English in here for this checkoff. So, it's going to say, all right, test the exhalation port. So what it's going to say, you push test exhalation port, and it gives you instructions. You have to put the circuit on, make sure that you have the pressure line hooked up and that it's plugged up on the end here to your large port tubing or to your large, to your patient, patient connectors, probably for lack of a better word. All right, and then you have to include the end of the circuit. Do not occlude the hole there. That hole has to be open. That's what it's checking for to see what the leak is out that hole. So you include the end of that, and then you press the button here that says start test. And you'll hear flow coming out, and that's what it's supposed to do. And then at the end, it's going to say test complete. All right? Now, once that's done, then you can attach it to your patient. It's spontaneously breathing. Okay? And then you can come over here and you can set your parameters. Whoops, I'm sorry. It says press monitoring to exit. So you got to read the instructions. All right? And we see we've got ventilator graphics going here. Right now we have, I'm going to silence my alarm here just for a second. I have an IPAP of 18, I have an EPAP of 7, and I have a rate of 15. All right? That's monitoring. Now, my patient, okay, my patient's respiratory rate, if I remember correctly, well, this is set at 14, so that's what it's given. So I'm getting about, is it 14? Should be 12. <coughs> See if somebody is oh, rates down below ten. All right, now it's read twelve. Just had to stabilize it a little bit. Okay, so whenever you come in, you're going to pick the card. <coughs> You can put the card up there on the ventilator, and let's say that my uh, card says that I want this patient to be on an IPAP of, I don't know, let's say 16. I'm going to turn that back to 16, and I want an EPAP of 5. Put that on 5, and again, my rate is going to be set as a backup rate. I don't want the ventilator giving breaths on top of what the patient's doing. Again, the patient's supposed to be breathing spontaneously. So, my backup rate, if my rate is set at 12, or what that's what the patient's doing, this is set at about 9, that's probably pretty good. You know, 3, 4, something like that is probably fine. Alright? So, um, I'm just going to leave that on 9. My inspiratory time, this is the inspiratory time that if this ventilator sees an apneic episode that my patient is no longer breathing 12 times a minute and the respiratory rate is dropped down to you know whatever I've got my alarm set at and this thing says hey this patient is apneic then my backup rate of nine is going to kick in and it's going to deliver the breath it's going to take one and a half seconds to give the inspiratory um, time or the, the amount of breath there for uh, 1.2 seconds it's also going to use this rise time over here to adjust that breath. 
how fast or how slow it's going to be giving. Okay? So this inspiratory time should be somewhere between one, one and a half seconds. All right? Um, a good place to start is probably, you know, split the difference between one and one and a half. And it's at one, 1 1.2, which I can live with that. All right? Again, if you see that this is not working and the patient goes into mechanical ventilation mode, you're not going to be worried so much about that as getting a bag and bagging the patient until you can get somebody down there to intubate them and then put them on a regular ventilator. You've got your oxygen FiO2, so whatever the FiO2 is on your card, you're going to put that um, into, uh, into the um, your settings up here. And again, your rise time. That rise time is only for your backup rate, so it has nothing really to do with how the breath is delivered during the, the patient's uh, uh, breath or you spontaneous breathing. Breath you set it, you have to set it, all right? And my suggestion would be you've got a range. You've got from 0.05 all the way to 0.4 seconds. So just sit in the middle somewhere, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Start it there, okay? It's a starting point. You may have to adjust that later. That's all that's for, all right? So now I've got all my settings in here. Now what I have to do is go back over here to monitoring and see where my alarms and everything need to be set. So I'm going to reset my alarms by pushing this button right here. I've already turned the silence off, reset it. So I'm showing I'm getting 16, which is what I had dialed in. And I'm just getting about um, 4, which I'm supposed to be getting about 5. So I mean, it's off just a little bit. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. Because if I go back over to parameters, I'm sorry, I had it at four. I thought I had it at five. So it's given what I what I it's given what I want it to be given. Again, the rate of twelve is what's happening with the patient breathing. If my patient goes apneic and I turn this off, I'm gonna make my patient go apneic. What you're gonna see is this rate is gonna go to ten, excuse me, nine, because that's where we have it set as a backup. Okay, I'll turn it off. There we go. And I should get an apnea alarm here. Of course, I haven't set my alarms yet. There's the apnea. And now you see the rate's gone to 10. All right. So that's my backup rate. So all this stuff over here that I set right here, these three things here, that is what's being delivered at this point in time. Okay? See, it's now at 9. All right? Okay, so I'm going to make my patient breathe again. Now if my patient's finished breathing, or is breathing, I'm going to reset my alarm here. After I've got my ventilator set and I see and I check my monitoring and make sure that it's delivering what I want it to be doing, the last thing I have to do is check my alarms. So I press the alarm function and I see that my high pressure is set at 22. What is my um, inspiratory pressure that I, my IPAP, what did I say I had it at? 16. So that should be about what? 18, 19. So, somewhere, you know, um, a couple of centimeters above whatever my IPAP is. Because I don't want it. I mean, some people say 10, but, you know, for, for, for um, non-invasive ventilation, I'd probably say, you know, closer, you know, maybe 5. So, you know, 20, 21 would be fine. It's at 22. I'm going to drop it down just a little bit. Okay? Because that's going to pr protect the lung and prevent me from overinflating the lung. My low pressure set at 6, okay, and my EPAP is supposed to be at what? 4. Is it 4? And I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. That's, why is it not alarming? Because it's still seeing the pressure move above the 6 of where it was set at. It was set at 6, wasn't it, before we started? As long as that pressure goes above six, then it's not going to—it's not going to uh, to alarm. So if we drop this down, let's drop this down to say two. Okay. 
The delay about 20 seconds is, you know, is what I consider to be comfortable. Um, I mean, you could go up a little bit, but really, if, if you lose the pressure, the sooner you know about it, the better. Apnea time setting is at 20 seconds. So if they stop breathing for more than 20 seconds, I really would like to know about that. My low minute ventilation alarm is going to be determined by what my minute ventilation is here on my, at the bottom of my screen. It says my minute ventilation here is five liters a minute with my patient right now. So I'm going to put that, you know, plus or minus, you know, two to three liters a minute. So if I take, if I'm setting my low minute ventilation, I take five and I subtract three, that would be what? Two. That'd be two. So I'll put that about two. All right. My high rate, I've got it 16. My patient's breathing 12 times a minute. That's probably a little tighter than I would want it. I'd probably put it about 10 above in this case. So if they started breathing more than 26 times a minute, all right, I'd want to know it. Or you could just say, hey, 12 plus, you know, um, I mean, he's breathing 12 now, so that would be 12 plus 10 would be 22. I'm sorry. So if his rate gets above 22, then I'd want to know what that um, that I've got a um, situation where my patient may be coming more to kidney. So I'll put this up to a high rate of 22. All right. And again, my low rate, I'd probably put it somewhere around, you know, um, seven or eight because the patient's breathing about 12 times a minute. So if he starts breathing around eight times a minute, that's when I'd want to know, hey, this person is slowing their breathing. Of course, keep in mind that when they slow that rate down, their tidal volume is going to slow down, so I'm going to probably hit that low minute ventilation alarm or trigger it also. Okay? So those are all my alarm settings. Everything's set. If I can go back over here to monitor, the last thing that I should check is come down here to see... Oh, there's one other thing I forgot to mention under the... the uh, under the parameters, there's a patient leak. Y'all remember what the number is for that? We don't want it greater than what? I don't think it's 60. No, it's like 25, I think. 25 liters a minute. Um, I think the in the setup and everything they said 25 is about normal. Okay, but again, if the, this doesn't have this has zero leak, and the reason it has zero leak is because we got a really tight seal on our patient here. Okay, I mean I could probably create a leak, but you know you're not going to really see a leak on this test line. So what we see now is this is moving a tidal volume about 365 to 400. All right, the PIP is at 16. The minute ventilation is at five, you have no leak, and the patient triggers about 94%, which means that whenever the patient or the machine senses that 94% of the breath of the patient starts slowing down on their flow, that's when it's going to terminate the breath, that 94%. So when the patient's flow starts reducing down to 94%, then it's going to stop the breath. Okay? So no alarms going off quiet ventilator. It's delivering what we say that it's supposed to be delivering. And if, if any of the uh, check off that this is what you got and all your alarms are set properly and it's delivering what you said that's on the card and you've got no alarms, hey, you pass the check off. Okay? Well, you pass this part of the check off. I should qualify that because you still got the written part, right? As it comes into play. Yes, ma'am. Um, low pressure delay. Again. I just, I just low pressure delay. It's just what it says. How long or how much time do you want this ventilator to delay alarming for low pressure? So it said it. It said it 20 seconds. So what's going to happen is, if you hit a low pressure alarm condition, it's going to wait 20 seconds before that alarm goes off. So that if for some reason the low pressure is corrected within that 20 seconds, then you're not going to get a low pressure alarm. Well, it is, but it's looking at pressure as opposed to respiratory rate. That's right. Okay?
Anybody got anything else? Any questions? All right. Cool.